Hello and welcome to another episode of Through an Opaque Lens with me, Niall Murphy. And it is January the 29th, the year of our Lord, apparently, 2022. And um, I'm going for a nice uh, perambulatory strail through the tropics. Um, and it's just really nice as I'm here in this t-shirt weather in the middle of what would otherwise be miserable bastard climate as I be back home in England. And today I want to talk about another part of the world which at this time of the year has a miserable bastard climate, even worse than what we have in England, and that is um, Canada. Yes, Canada, that great um, colonial eight Paris uh, with her, the Queen as head of state, where people go out and about, and how Canada is um, now teetering on the edge of civil war, so it appears. Because what's happening now, of course, as you know, and what I've seen so far is quite interesting, is that Justin Trudeau has now considered um, a great big chunk of Canadians to be unacceptable because they have unacceptable views. And the truckers are basically um, stopping Canada from moving. A great big convoy, and not only are there truckers doing it, there are other people joining the convoy as well to put a block on the supply chains coming in and out of Canada. Now, of course, um, you know, what does uh, Justin Trudeau say? He comes out, gets on his um, soapbox like the little Hitler that he is, and says that these are a fringe group of people with unacceptable views. The thing is, he's an elected prime minister of a parliamentary democracy in a constitutional monarchy, and um, he doesn't really have the right to a voice whether or not he, the, these people have got acceptable or unacceptable views at all. Speak the truckers. There goes one. Yes, he doesn't have the right. He's been elected by the people. So he's basically saying that a vast chunk of the Canadian electorate are by their very nature unacceptable. What does that mean? It means that he might have to just stick them all in internment camps and kill the fuckers to purify democracy. What does that remind you of? So what it reminds me of, eh? It reminds me of a funny little man with a funny slanted fringe and a funny moustache that we had in uh, Nazi Germany. That's the place, yes. That's the direction that he's going in. Well, this clone of Fidel Castro really is showing his true colours now, isn't he? To the point now that every time I have seen um, every time I've seen Jordan Peterson tweeting about this, the good Canadian coming out and saying, this is murderous, um, this is fascist, you know, talking about Justin Trudeau and also talking about a few other things. In Quebec state, of course, the French, the uh, La France speaking bit of Canada, right? Well, I mean, if you've not been vaccinated and you want to go into a shop, you have to be supervised, supervised by these malevolent entities of the state who will be monitoring what you are and what you're not buying and telling you what you can and can't buy. You can only buy food and medicines and you're allowed to, not allowed to buy anything else now. And there will be people frog marching you around, being the dirty, unruly, unvaccinated people that you are, you, you walking health hazards, you walking vermin who are not allowed to take part in society anymore. Well, all I say is good luck to those truckers and um, if the Canadians um, have got the, uh, how can I say, if they've got the stuff to see this through and uh, they can block off supplies to Canada and they can starve Canada, right? Then what? Justin Trudeau had better understand that this fringe group of people that he likes to compare to fascists, right, are the electorate and they can get rid of him and that maybe in the next general election, Justin Trudeau is gone. And one day I hope to see something that resembles a Nuremberg too, where scum de la scum like that, twant, there, I didn't say it. There's an algorithm proof word for you, YouTube. That twant, that um, Fidel Castro clone, who is the utter scumbag, better bloody understand that when he's no longer Prime Minister and at some point in the future when we have all wrested ourselves back from this tyranny, he will find himself on the wrong side of history and can he live to see that? And Would he put that in his pipe and smoke it? Now, to be honest, if he tried to put anything in a pipe and smoke it, he's so pussy he'd probably cough his lungs out, the silly little weasel. Speaking of other bad Canadians, I used to like um, Neil Young. Now, is Neil Young? No, just look at him, he's old now. So, yes, Neil Old, formerly Neil Young, um, 
said, decided that he was going to challenge Joe Rogan and he said that to Spotify. Either Joe Rogan's taken down and removed from Spotify or I'll remove my stuff. Well, he didn't stand a chance there. The thing is, though, that... Um, all right, yeah, Neil Young. Never really been a fan of his. I always thought his voice was a bit horribly whiny, but you've got to respect his body of work, after all. You know, he did do some good songs that have been remembered. Heart of Gold, Keep on Rocking in the Free World. His connection to... Um, Crosby, Stills and Nash, you know, when they got together and done their four-part harmonies, you know, and um, the connection there, Graham Nash, I think the English one, the rest of them were Canadians. But anyway, I digress. The truth of the matter is that Joe Rogan, like my mate back in London, who took ivermectin when he had COVID, and he said it reduced his symptoms right down to that of barely like cold when he got it the second time. And I'll tell you, I believe him. I believe him because there are certain types of anecdotal evidence I do believe to be true. When my mate um, tries things out and he tells me the results he gets, that's good enough for me. Um, he's someone I've known for half my life and I know he wouldn't lie about stuff like this, right? Well, Joe Rogan um, had um, ivermectin administered to him by his doctor and he spoke about this and he was smeared. They said, Joe Rogan takes horse dewormer. No, he got it just prescribed from him. Ivermectin that had been made for human use, right? prescribed to him by his doctor. So they smeared him, they misrepresented him, they lied about him. Then, of course, didn't he get someone, I can't remember the name of the man, but he got one of the, um, one of the sort of like doctors or pundits that they have on the mainstream telly in America, and he interrogated him and tripped him up, um, claiming that his science was wrong, or that his, uh, what he was saying was false. And that he, I don't know what happened there, but at the same time, was it CNN or NBC or I don't know who these channels are. I don't pay much attention to mainstream anything anymore, especially not American mainstream anything. It's so dumb, it's frightening. But anyway, Joe Rogan made mince meat out of them. They went into damage control mode and all of the propaganda and all the damage control that they do, they do not stand a chance against someone like Joe Rogan, not a chance at all, because he is more popular than all of them. And he's uncancelable, uncancelable at this point, right? So this is what we have to understand. And, of course, Jordan Peterson, who um, is, I kind of think, of the, the, one of the best Canadians, a good Canadian, a proper good Canadian. Um, when he talks about stuff, and he's been um, on Twitter talking about um, these rules that have been brought in Canada, referring to them as murderous, and they are murderous. But what do they do with Jordan Peterson? And what do they do with those other good Canadians, the truckers? The mainstream media tries to make them out to be fascists. Now, George Orwell warned us that the next people, to, the next fascists that would come along would call themselves anti-fascist. And that's exactly what's happened. So, the anti-fascist fascists are telling you that the people who are pro-freedom are fascists, right? Well, sorry about the noise of the traffic, but hey, just uh, enjoy it. It's all part of the ambience. Ambience. Oh, I've got to stop here and have a look at this valley behind me. Check out this valley behind me, everyone. Isn't that nice? You know, sometimes I see a nice green valley like that. And sometimes I think I might be in the tropics. But despite the fact that I'm in the tropics, it's actually quite surprising how familiar um, that looks for someone who comes from a temperate green island like the one that I come from. Anyway, I digress again. What I am um, just basically going to end this on is to say that, yeah, with the likes of people like Jordan Peterson, as well as all those truckers in Canada that are standing up for their rights, um, good on them, more power to them, fair play to them. And if it turns out that there's this bunch of propagandist sociopaths out there, you know, calling them fascists, we've now got fascists calling freedom fighters fascists. Now, it's only a matter of time before people start, um, you know, enough people on mass start understanding how to decode this double think, this inversion tactic that George Orwell um, come up with. You know, now, of course, he come up with this. Unfortunately, um, a lot of these people have come along and started using it as a manual. But he was very good at, for anyone who's read 1984, and I would recommend that you read it, I would recommend that you listen to the audio book, and I would recommend that you watch the film with John Hurt and Richard Burton. And, I, and then I reckon you do all three again and learn about how these techniques work. Then they can't control your mind, right? That's how it works. 
everyone who reads 1984 cannot be brainwashed by 1984 tactics. And it's only a matter of time before enough people wake up to this. And this is why I remain optimistic, you see? I remain optimistic because, you know, sometimes we have freedoms, we rest on our laurels, we become complacent, we end up realising, um, or well, not realising, that, you know, we don't appreciate it and we take it for granted and it's just there. But sometimes we do need our freedoms to be challenged because it's the only way we can maintain them. At this level of evolution that we human monkeys are still at, we still are at that point now where we need the right sort of common adversaries to unite us. I would love it if we could get to a point where we didn't have this, you know, because a lot of the time I do think, my God, I hate being human, it's so fucking primitive. But that's where we're at, right? And this is what we've got to try and do. Anyway, I hope that was interesting, and I'm absolutely buggered I'm going to monetize this video. No, I mean, I've been so, uh, I've been so vitriolic and so angry um, that I've, I'm absolutely not going to monetize this video, no. Um, apart from anything else, fuck the advertisers as well, fuck the corporations, bollocks to the lot of them. And um, luckily enough, my channel um, is still quite small because I only have what, I don't know, just over a thousand, 1100, is it? Right? Something like that. Was it 1200 now? Getting close to 1200. But my subscriber numbers in the grand scheme of things are so low that I can still at this point get away with being a rude recalcitrant git on YouTube. And I'm not famous enough yet to, um, for anyone to take my video down or strike me. But if they do, then I'm just going to go on Rumble. Um, um, Rumble and Bitshoot. I haven't uploaded to Rumble and Bitshoot for a while. But if YouTube get rid of me, fuck YouTube, I say. I don't mind being obscure. After all, fame is extremely overrated in this world. And the world of fame corrupts you. It's like syphilis of the soul. Who wants to be famous anyway? Right, so... <laughs> See you later, alligator. See you soon, baboon. If you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And while you're at it, do your bit to help send big tech to the land of MySpace by having a look at the show notes below and checking out our alternative platforms.